Uh, the president came to office certainly with some grandiose plans for what he could achieve in terms of U.S. relations with Russia. There's a lot of talk then of a grand bargain. I don't know if the, the president himself ever thought there was a grand bargain was poss possible. It certainly wanted to move closer to, closer to Russia. Uh, but he found once he got into office that the political circumstances in the United States wouldn't really allow for that. Uh, there's a great deal of concern uh, because of Russian interference in the elections. A process that is being investigated at this point has become a focal point of, uh, of American political discussion. Uh, it's also preventing the president from moving any faster on, on Russia policy. We saw the, the congressional action uh, on sanctions over the summer. Uh, but the other thing uh, to, to, to underscore is that uh, despite Trump's own desire to move more closely or more uh, closer to the Russians, he appointed uh, people to senior positions in his government who actually held a different view. If you look at Secretary of State Tillerson, Secretary of Defense Mattis, uh, his second national security advisor, McMaster, they all harbored, I think, deeper doubts about Russia, what the implications of Russia's foreign policy was for the United States, and therefore were much more cautious uh, in, in dealing with Russia than the president himself has been or would have been under different circumstances. I don't think we can go back to, to what uh, we had before. Uh, you know, part of that is be in, the, in the near term is because of the domestic political situation in the United States, also because of the domestic political situation in Russia. There's a presidential election in Russia in March. Uh, Putin obviously is in a much more powerful position than President Trump is, uh, but nevertheless, the, the nature of Russian campaigns is that uh, they don't break new ground as far as foreign policy is concerned. But I think the broader point is that this, I think, hope that many of us harbored uh, in the West 25 years ago with the breakup of the Soviet Union, uh, that Russia would slowly integrate itself into the Euro-Atlantic community, uh, was, a false, was a false hope. Uh, Russian policy over the past decade or more, certainly under Putin, has demonstrated that Russia is not interested in that integration. It sees itself as, a, as an independent great power, uh, that's going to pursue its own national interest. Uh, integration uh, makes no sense in that regard. They will get what they can out of the relationship with Europe and the United States, but there's no desire to become part of Europe and the United States, or uh, part of the, the Euro-Atlantic community. So there are very profound differences now uh, between Russia and the United States over the principles of world order, uh, their specific geopolitical uh, conflicts, Ukraine and Syria, uh, are the, the most prominent at this point. And there continues to be what we've called for many, many years the values gap between democratic societies uh, and Europe and the United States. And what is clearly an authoritarian uh, system in Russia at this point. Uh, so it's very difficult to bridge that gap. So we're not going to reset the relationship. We're not going to go back to a situation where Russia is going to be on the path towards integration. What we're moving towards, uh, I would argue, uh, is much more of a uh, normal relationship between, between great powers. Uh, we have different interests. Uh, we pursue those interests uh, very, very vigorously. Uh, that doesn't mean that we have to come to confrontation or conflict, uh, but to think that this is going to be a more cooperative than competitive relationship uh, anytime uh, soon, I think, is mistaken. Yeah. But how are Uh, the United States and Russia do not benefit from moving towards permanent con confrontation. Uh, we are moving in that direction at this point. Uh, the leaders will eventually realize that we cannot continue on this course without doing serious damage to both countries. It's not a, in many, it's not a zero-sum game. It's a negative-sum game for if we continue on this track. And that means we need to find, uh, if not... Uh, common uh, common interest, uh, ways of aligning our interests so that we can pursue uh, our own goals in a less confrontational manner. Uh, I think it's going to be very difficult uh, in the initial phase to find uh, those areas where we can move uh, in the same, di same direction, but we do need to resolve the issue of interference uh, in elections. We do need to come up with a set of cyber norms to regulate competition in a very 
uh, important domain. Uh, Ukraine is a, an issue that has to be resolved uh, in some fashion for us to reduce the tensions between Europe and the United States on one hand and Russia on the other. Uh, and the Middle East uh, is a, a problem where uh, the United States and Russia are going to be significant actors. Uh, but I think we both need to r realize that the, uh, the regional powers are probably more significant than, than we are. Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Turkey uh, in particular. Uh, and that the United States uh, and Russia do share an interest in the emergence of a new equilibrium. Uh, in the Middle East. Neither of us really wants the Middle East to be, denom to be den dominated by one, uh, by one power, either Iran or Saudi Arabia. How we can work together uh, to produce a balance that is satisfactory from the standpoint of American national interest and Russian nationalist is a very complicated question, but one that we need to sit down and discuss. Finally, uh, on North Korea, uh, 